Hey, what's up everyone? Got the Z6 III here, the Z9, which one's better? Come on, that's a silly question. They're very different cameras, but I want to chat with you about what my thoughts are on shooting the Z6 III as a wildlife camera. So let's start out by saying I have not been shooting the Z6 III a ton. I've had it for a few months, but I've only really been shooting it for the past few weeks actively and I haven't been shooting a ton of birds with it. I've been doing a little bit more wildlife with it uh, out here in Glacier National Park, and now I'm here in beautiful Washington State, my first time here. So what do I think of the Z6 III? Is it a great wildlife camera? If you're coming from a Z6 II, a Z6, or a Z7, a Z7 II, any of those cameras, this is a major upgrade, and why? you're getting animal and bird eye tracking in this camera, which is just making it so much better and easier to shoot than any of those previous Z6 or Z7 models or Z5, I think they had, any of those that didn't previously have that. If you're trying to compare this to a Z8 or Z9, the focusing is about the same with animal eye tracking as you've seen in my previous test. If you didn't see that video comparing the Z6 III to the Z9 eye tracking, go ahead and check that out. But other than that, it's just not quite the same camera. So coming from the previous Z6 and Z7 models, the, basically the models below this one, or you know, comparably, uh, the, just the eye tracking is so much better in it. I do love that. What else do I like? I love the lightweight nature of this camera. It's so much lighter than that Z9. That Z9 is a tank, it really is. What else do I like? Uh, the viewfinder is nice. I'm, you know, I've read some reviews and initially it was like, oh my gosh, this viewfinder. It's kind of hard to tell. If I bounce back and forth between camera to camera, I notice the colors are a little bit, like slightly more vivid, a little bit more bright as it's supposed to be in the viewfinder of this Z6 III. But how does that translate into shooting? Uh, for me, it doesn't do anything really. You know, it's not like I'm usually out shooting in the brightest, harshest midday sun. And that's the only time where really a much brighter viewfinder would be a, a big advantage because you could kind of see it a little bit better. But other than that, I'm usually shooting in lower light stuff. The difference is quite negligible. So it does not make a difference much other than, hey, it's nicer to look at, you know? That's about it. And it took me like, I have to have both cameras side by side to go back and forth to really notice the difference. I have to have both cameras side by side and kind of go from one to the other to really notice the difference. And sometimes I don't even know if that's a difference between the lenses and stuff, but it does just feel like it's nicer to look in there. So there's that, that's an advantage. The lightness, like I said, is great. Um, I do like having the uh, user presets up top. That's kind of nice. I haven't really found a use to configure them yet, but in my Z6 II I had, and I think the more I shoot this, I'll come up with some good ways to shoot that. Other advantages, that's about it. So disadvantages, things I don't love about the Z6 III. Um, I do miss having a third function button down here because I do have that programmed on my Z9 and I use that. Not a huge deal, I have worked around it, but it is something I notice. The other thing I certainly miss with this is the vertical shutter grip, not having that. So anytime I wanna shoot vertical, I have to do this or this. It's a little bit more awkward, not quite as comfortable as just having a vertical shutter grip where you can just hold the camera normally, you know, my, my hands and arms stay the same stable way, no matter what I'm shooting, horizontal or vertical with the Z9. So I do love having that vertical shutter grip on the Z9. And then I think my biggest complaint as far as differences, and again, I am comparing this to a camera that's over twice the cost, I think, is this flip screen. I really do not like this flip screen, the way it rotates out like that. You know, a lot of times I do this where I'm trying to shoot something low real quick, right? So number one, I have to flip it out and then rotate it. Not that big a deal, but it's just an extra weird step. And then I have to find the right angle, which I have to do with the Z9. But then I'm doing this, right? And I don't know if you see right here, but this is how I would normally shoot this a lot, right? I try to get low. Well, normally I would hold it out this way so I can get to my zoom lens and rotate it if I need to, something like that. But if you can notice, this screen right here hits my forearm. And so it's just a way that I'm used to shooting. And then when I do that, it folds it, it moves it, it pushes it, and I have to swing it back out and then it's in the way again. It's very much in the way. So I've had to either hold overhead, which then my arm is in the way of seeing it, or I have to come awkwardly in completely underneath and do it. And then I can't quite easily get as low and actually operate a zoom lens or anything like that. So it's just annoying, <laughs> it really is. Um, when I first got the camera, I was photographing common loons 
in a kayak and the first morning out with it, I was ready to chuck the thing in the water because I was just bumping it so much. It was so in the way, it was so cumbersome. Compared to the Z8, Z9 system, if I want to flip low, there, done, and I can come right down here. It's Number one, it's lined up with the camera. That's a nice thing. It's not too big of a deal to get things to line up with it offset. It's a little bit more awkward or it takes a little bit more time to find your subject sometimes, but not too big a deal. Hope this sun goes away. Um, but the other thing is, it's just, number one, it's just one flip, which is a little bit easier. And listen, this does not sound like much, but when you have birds or wildlife in front of you, and sometimes it's a very quick, short, fleeting moment, every second counts. And so, yes, will I get more used to this camera as I shoot it? Of course. But I just don't see a way that that flip screen is ever going to be as convenient as this one to do this. Um, and then the other part is I can come over here on the side. You can see, like, it's just, it's not in the way at all. I can see the screen clearly. My arm isn't in the way. My arm isn't hitting it. It's not bumping it. I can still operate a zoom lens if I have it, and I can just hold it more stable and low. And I know many of you do not shoot a flip screen like that. In fact, most of the people I work with just never use the flip screen like that, but I can tell you from experience, if you get good at it, practice with it a lot, it is a huge advantage. There's so many photos I've taken from perspectives I've wanted by using that flip screen on the Z9 and getting that really low perspective or just somewhere I couldn't get physically with my body or my head to be able to put my eye in that viewfinder. And it makes a big difference to me to be able to get those shots and get those angles, especially quickly. The other part of this is the vertical. When you go vertical with it, having it down here, again, it's so easy to bump and hit. And again, it takes, you know, a little bit of flipping motion there. Not horrible, but it's something. So the biggest downside I find with this particular flip screen is that there's no camera body really blocking it. So again, if I go out horizontal like that or vertical, it's so easy when I get low for me to bump it into the ground to change the angle and then again I can't see so I finally get it dialed in and I'm shooting and that boom I bump it again. It just it's happened a lot to me and I know this is a, a small nitpick. This is also not a big issue for many people but for me it really is. And again if we go over to the Z8 Z9 flip screen in vertical mode number one I have the vertical shutter grip on the Z9 which I like and then I just flip it out like that. The camera is there to kind of block and protect it so I'm not bumping it and hitting it a lot. It's just better for how I shoot. All right, so one other thing I wanna talk about is the video on it and the video features are great. They seem really nice. Um, I don't like that I can't punch in just like I can with the Z8, Z9 video because they're such higher resolution sensors. I can do, a, I think it's a 1.5 crop factor and still get um, 120 frames a second 4K video out of it. Uh, with this one, you can't do that. Uh, I do like the 240 frames a second slow motion though, which has been really nice, but that's only at 1080, but that's fine because that's how I share most of my stuff, especially for reels and shorts and things like that anyway. So not a big deal there, but I would say that's the only advantage there on the Z6 III. Over the Z9 is the 240 frames a second. This doesn't quite do that yet. Um, Maybe that'll come in an update, who knows. But I just like the versatility overall of this camera's video features a little bit more. Um, higher resolution, I can still crop in and post, and then I can do that uh, crop in camera as well. So it gives me a couple different, basically frame sizes or zoom options, even with a prime lens, which is really nice. Oh, and one last thing, the files. I am completely fine with the 24 megapixel files. In fact, I prefer that resolution over the 40, whatever the Z8, Z9 is, but I'm not noticing a huge increase in quality with low light with the Z6 III over the Z9. So not a big difference there. I'd say they're pretty comparable in my experience so far, just looking at the files. I'm sure pixel peepers and people that really wanna, you know, back and forth compare them can find some differences. I've read some stuff about uh, dynamic range taking a hit on this sensor. I don't know. I mean, again, you'd have to shoot the same thing side by side and really compare them to tell the difference. In real world shooting, going out and shooting um, some really low light stuff, which I haven't done a ton of, but I've done some with, it looks fine at higher ISOs. And the thing I do more often is shooting 
very big dynamic range stuff and underexposing so I can lift the shadows up and maintain highlight detail and color and stuff like that. For example, if this was like a beautiful sunrise behind us and I wanted to maintain detail in something down here in the shadows, I would expose for the sky with like bright colors and everything and a low ISO and then just bring up those shadows. I've done that a bunch with this recently and it looks great. It looks fine, it looks amazing. So again, the difference there, I don't know. You know, if you really find yourself needing resolution, obviously Z8, Z9 has the advantage there. For me, for every use I have, every single use, getting published, all, just any way I make money, 24 megapixels is plenty. I'm sure those of you that follow me know that. I already kind of feel that way, that this is complete overkill with resolution. But in the end, it's not hurting anything for me. I don't notice a degradation in quality or low light or anything. I feel like I can do the same thing with both of these cameras. I just like this camera better, the Z9. I just like shooting it better in most circumstances. But every time I'm going to do a longer shoot or a long hike and I wanna bring a camera along, I love having the lightweight capability of this. I haven't decided if I'm gonna keep it yet. I've had it for a few months. I might swap it out for a Z8, uh, we'll see. But for now, I'm gonna hang on to it a little bit more and see if I can find just that I get more used to it and you know if it, if it kind of fits in with my shooting style and all that. So there's my thoughts on it. Certainly not the only opinion on this camera. I'm sure some people love it more. I'm sure some people dislike it more, but that's been my experience with it, shooting wildlife and some birds with it. So hope it helps you out if you're trying to make a decision. If you're coming from a Z6 or Z7, do it, you'll love it.